Hello everyone, welcome back to another Ableton tutorial. And today's tutorial we're going to look at how to make a, uh, a, a multi-sampled instrument uh, like the one you hear behind me. We're going to recreate this sound. This is uh, an instrument I made. I borrowed a friend, of, a friend of mine's wooden kalimba. Thank you very much Hokkon for the uh, loan of that. And uh, made a few multi-samples of it recorded myself playing it and turned it into this instrument. So what we're going to look at today is that basic technique, how to turn something that you've recorded into a uh, fully playable instrument. It's, uh, we're not going to go too deep into how far you can take this, but rather sort of look at the basic techniques and a couple of ideas on the top of it. So let's just press stop on you for now and let's begin by deleting that. We're going to start from scratch. So, how to begin? Well, right here I have the original samples. This is me uh, playing playing the wooden kalimba. Uh, I made it, played a few notes on it. Uh, bit of a dodgy one there, doesn't really matter. Because uh, we're multi-sampling it, we're going to turn it into something new. So, the first thing we're going to do is to bring in a sampler. I'm not going to use simpler to begin with. On this I'm going to use Sampler. So I drag that just into here and it creates a new MIDI track and there we have an instance of Sampler. Uh, now I'm going to just click and drag the whole of the audio sample into the Sampler. And now if I turn on uh, MIDI monitoring I can just play a middle C. Aaron is going to play back through the whole sample at a concert pitch. I mean at the original recorded pitch. Uh, so that's not exactly what I wanted to do, so let's begin to refine it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just collect this first note here. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm not going to get too tight because I want to make sure I get like the little bit of finger noise uh, when I start to play the notes. And of course when you're playing a kalimba, timing is uh, slightly more difficult maybe, especially a wooden kalimba like this. So now I just have that one note. Now those I'm just pressing middle C on my keyboard and it's playing it back at the recorded pitch. Now those perceptive among you uh, will have noticed that that is not in fact a C. So how do I figure out what note it is? Um, well, one simple way of doing this is to bring in uh, an operator onto an empty channel to uh, we just got an init operator patch here. We're just going to also MIDI monitor that. So now when I press this the, the middle C we hear that, turn it down a bit. And we can clearly hear that they're a different sound. But if I come in here and I just adjust this root note value here, now they're playing the same note or close enough. Uh, so I know that this original note is in fact a G sharp or an A flat, if you like. Um, so now I'm going to open up the zone editor, click on this little zone button here in the triangle, and that pops out. And I'm just going to constrain that so that it only plays that one note. So now if I play middle C, uh, turn this off for a second, we get nothing. But if I play that, that note, that A flat, there I get that. Now I'm just going to repeat this process again. Uh, for each of these notes that I've multi-sampled. So again, I'm just going to drag this in. It's going to create a new zone. There we go. So this was all the notes that I was able to get out of the kalimba. Uh, we've used the operator for everything we need for now, so now I'm just going to order these so that they are easy to see what notes we have covered, because it doesn't really matter right now so much what order the, the layers are in, and then that one goes one up. Is that the same? Do we have two of that note? Yeah, we do. Oop. Gonna pick one. Gonna turn you off. For now, I like that one better. Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. Now we don't clearly don't have all of the notes covered for an octave here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to drag out, extend the range on some of these. 
So we know that one goes from C to E flat. This one is going to go E. This one is going to come down F sharp. Do we go up to F? Yeah, we do. So that's now F sharp to G. That's G sharp. Stretch you out to be the A. A sharp, yeah. So now we should have an entire octave. Lovely. Okay. Now, oh, this one was not right. This one should be C4. There we go. Okay. So we have now uh, an octave spread out. Uh, we can take this idea a little bit further if we like. So we can stretch some of these. And if I hover just, uh, just over the end there, I can make a fade on the top there. So that then the, the it's not individual samples, but we're actually stretching out and using a couple of samples at the same time. Actually, that's sounding quite nice. I'm going to do this across the board. Uh, hover over the end there. And then, uh, yeah. And that's making a fade, a fade on these samples. I'm not being too precise on this, as you can see, in terms of ranges and everything else. Yeah, fade it. Fade it. And yeah, let's do the same at the other end of these samples as well. Oh, something weird's happening there. Fade you. Okay, so now we have, uh, this is spread nicely over the keyboard. We're getting some interesting sounds. Now let's, uh, let's make this a little bit more responsive uh, to my playing. So we're going to connect uh, velocity information with some stuff now. Uh, so the, the way we can do this is uh, over here in the filters and uh, filter slash global tab. Now what I'm going to do to sort of check this is I'm just going to program in um, Some simple pattern and make it so they all go into each other. You can sort of go over as well, doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'm going to sort of randomize the velocities on these so that I can hear the effect of what I'm doing. So let's even make it go maximum to minimum. Uh, we're going to now bring you down a little bit. Going to switch you over to here and. And as you can hear at the moment, uh, the velocities are not actually doing anything. But let's connect those velocities with some things. So one thing that we can do here is with the filter, we can connect the velocity with the amount of the filter. So for instance, if I turn the filter down, but turn this up. You can hear uh, that velocity having a big effect there. So let's... Uh, and another thing, uh, we are going to turn the fi filter envelope off for now. Um, another thing we can do is, of course, here with the volume to velocity. So the loudness being connected with the velocity as well, obviously having a big effect there. So what I'm going to do, instead of just setting these, I'm going to make these relatively easy to access and change if I want to. So I'm going to do that using macros. I'm going to press Command-G, group this uh, sampler, and I'm going to map, and I'm going to connect uh, the filter frequency. We're going to connect uh, the filter velocity, and we're going to connect the volume velocity to some macros here. Uh, 
Ah, that's sounding quite nice. We're getting quite nice now. Um, so it's been quite responsive, quite human. Obviously, I've programmed in some MIDI. I'm not just playing this, but you can imagine what it would be like if I'm playing this on a MIDI keyboard. Uh, a little bit more processing on this. We're going to add a... Um, we're going to try... Yeah, yeah, let's try... Um, uh, let's try Ableton's multiband dynamics. I'm going to use a preset, the OTT preset. And this is going to sound intense. Whoa. Yeah. So let's bring down the amount of that. And we can also hear a lot of the white noise in there uh, from, uh, you know, just recording noise that happens. So we're also going to uh, do something with the uh, amplitude envelope here. So that the... This is quite nice. Also going to uh, use an EQ in here. Take out some of those harsh, harsher sounds. Now, let's try adding some layers on top of this. So let's see what happens if we add yeah, a little bit of Foley sound on top of this. So I'm going to uh, group this instrument, Command G. Uh, and now in here, I'm going to just drag some samples. Um, so, let's go into the samples folder. Uh, let, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, oh, uh, this one, layer up. Let's bring you in here. Now that sounds kind of like you'd expect it to sound. It's nice, but it's also pretty obvious it's a sample being pitched around. So let's bring in an expression control in here and do a couple of things with this. So again, we're going to take every new MIDI note is going to create a random start point for this sample. We don't want it to go 0 to 100, maybe 0 to 30. So it's now not always starting from the same place. Uh, and I'm also going to connect this with a pitch. Uh, so we're going to connect that with the transpose here. And again, we don't want quite such a large range. And what I think will be quite nice is if we connect these same things here uh, that we're using velocity information for to, uh, to this sample. So let's turn on the mapping. Let's connect the filter frequency. Oh, I need to make a macros for it. Inside of here. Uh, why are we doing? Oh yeah, I need to make new macros. Oh, I can just connect them here. Yeah, so let's connect that to there. Let's connect the velocity to there. And let's connect the amplitude velocity to that. Now I'm going to duplicate this and just add a different sample in. So I'm just going to Command D. I'm going to come back to the samples here and I'm going to use... Yeah, I think that will do nicely. I'm going to just add a little bit of random panning on these things. And turn up the spread. This is good. doing too much on the transpose. We don't. Need... And I'm going to create uh, another macro that's going to allow me to easily control the volume of these layers. These layers. So the way I'm going to do that is going to go to some audio effects here. Utility. We're going to add that in here. Gonna map that to there, and I'm gonna make it go from only up to zero. I don't want it to go all the way up to 35 dB. And now let's do the same thing here. I can turn off mapping. 
can drag you after that. Uh, we're gonna again map 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 to zero. And now we're gonna map that to there. Now let's rename this Foley layer. A flurry layer. Foley layer. Uh, now let's uh, just tie the whole thing together. I can use again audio effects. Uh, compressor. Oh, don't need the side chain on this. We're literally just using it to control some of the peaks. And then uh, perhaps a little bit of reverb. I think a little bit of reverb will sound nice on this. And there we go. I'm going to stop that MIDI playing. Oh, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to, so that I can make this a, a performable instrument, I'm going to sort of create a little bit of random velocity on the way in. So I'm going to use MIDI effects, uh, the velocity plugin here, and I'm just going to open up the random here. So now uh, when I turn on the monitoring here, I'm just using my computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard. It's now giving me a little bit of humanity and humanness to the way that that's, uh, that's being played. So, there we go. How to create a... Uh, and we're back to this MIDI loop. Are we sick of this MIDI loop yet? Um, how to create a, uh, a uh, multi-sampled instrument quite quickly and simply uh, in Ableton with a little bit of layers and a little bit of performability. As ever, thank you to my Patreon members. This project will be available, uh, including this instrument, on, on my Patreon. Link is in the description down below. Um, if you have future things you'd like to see some tutorials on, uh, please let me know down in the comments. Um, yeah, there we go. Hope you got something from that. Hope you enjoy making your own instruments.